Hello, and welcome to the Soundcraft video manual series. My name is Austin, and today I will be demonstrating how to set up an external Wi-Fi router via Ethernet with your UI series mixer. Let's get started. Before we begin, keep in mind that the information in this video is generally universal for most modern routers, but we cannot guarantee that it will work with them all. We recommend having the owner's manual of your particular router on hand in case you need to clarify some of the concepts that we'll cover. As we discussed in a previous video, by default, the way that you access the mixer is via the Wi-Fi hotspot that the mixer puts out. Your device connects to the mixer, it's assigned an IP address by the mixer's DHCP server, and you access it without ever even thinking about it. This is exactly what happens when you go to your local coffee shop and you use their Wi-Fi inside. In this instance, what we're essentially doing is the reverse of that. We're going to put the mixer on the router's network manually by assigning it a static IP address. Once we've done so, any device connected to the router will have access to the mixer. We'll start by confirming the default IP address of the router and identifying the available addresses that can be assigned to the mixer. For this, we'll need to connect to and log into our router. I have a Linksys router here for demonstration purposes. Join the Wi-Fi network that your router is putting out. This one can be accessed via the standard 192.168 .1.1 IP address from the web browser, but if you don't know what IP address to access your router from, it will be located in the owner's manual for your particular one. I'll log in with the credentials for it, which again will be located in the manual if you don't know them. Now that I'm logged in, I'm actually greeted with the information that I need right on the home page. Yours may be in a separate menu, so consult your manual for that information. We can see some basic information, such as the name of the router and the IP address that's assigned to it, which is commonly referred to as the gateway. The router is nearly always assigned the first available IP address in any given network or subnet, hence why this one ends in dot one. A little bit below this section of the page, we can see more relevant information, such as the option to enable our DHCP server, which should always be set to enabled for this sort of application. Below that, we can see the range of available IP addresses designated for DHCP users, 192.168.1.100 to 192.168.1.150, which allows a total of 51 users or devices to automatically be given an address when joining the network. Because we are assigning a static IP address to the mixer, we want to stay outside of this range. Since we know the router's default IP address is 192.168.1.1, the available ranges of addresses to choose from are 192.168.1.2, through 192.168.1.99, as well as 192.168.1.151 through 192.168.1.254. In order to easily remember the IP address given to the mixer, let's select something like 192.168.1.200. To provide some context to what this means in simple, non-technical terms, you can think of IP addressing like the street address of your home and how it relates to the other houses on your street. Your house has a street number and a street name. All of the houses on the same street are within proximity of each other, but each house has a unique street number for that street. IP addressing is set up in much the same way. The mixer will need to be assigned a unique IP address out of the range we have available or what's commonly referred to as a subnet, along with the router, and so will any device that's also connected to the router, be it a phone, tablet, or any other device. All of the IP addresses assigned to every device on a network will be similar, other than the last number, or what's called an octet, in an address. 
So to sum up, we can think of the street number for our house as the IP address and the street name as the subnet. The mixer, router, and any devices controlling the mixer will ultimately have IP addresses assigned to them that lie within the same subnet. With that out of the way, let's move on to the last step of the process. Knowing what we do now, we can assign the mixer an IP address in the subnet we need. We'll go ahead and log into our mixer again via the Wi-Fi hotspot. Now let's navigate to the settings and then the network tab. From here, we'll need to log into the network configuration menu and you can do so by clicking on the config button that you see on the page. When you do, you'll be prompted to log in with a username and password. The credentials for both of these are admin by default, but you can optionally change that password in the next menu if you want. Now that we're in, let's navigate over to the LAN configuration tab. As you can see, the LAN or Ethernet driver of our mixer is currently statically assigned the default IP address of 10.10.2.1. We're going to change this to the 192.168.1.200 address elected earlier in the video. Next, the subnet mask, which we can leave alone as the default of 255.255.255.0 is fine for this purpose. Lastly, we have the gateway, which as I mentioned before is the address of the router, so we need to change it to 192.168.1.1. Once we've done so, we can click the green save slash update button to confirm our changes. We'll need to power the mixer off so that the changes can take effect, so we'll go ahead and do that now. While the mixer is turned off, go ahead and connect your ethernet cable between the mixer and your router. Just a couple more important notes. If you're using the UI24R mixer, make sure to plug your ethernet cable into the port labeled ethernet and not the one labeled ethernet 2, as that second port is only currently used for the cascade feature available with the latest firmware. Also, make sure that you plug the other end of that cable into one of the usually four available Ethernet ports on your router and not the Internet or WAN port, otherwise this will not work. From here, all that's left is to test our connection. We'll connect our device back to the router's Wi-Fi network. Once we're connected, we can launch our web browser and type in the mixer's new IP address that we assigned it, which is 192.168.1.200. And as you can see, the mixer's login page comes up and we're good to go. Don't forget to bookmark or create a shortcut to the page in your web browser since you'll need this IP address to access the mixer from now on. Thanks for watching. For more news, product information, and troubleshooting tips, Visit us at soundcraft.com or our anytime help center at help.harmonpro.com.